Right. My name is Chikle. I am the manager of um, community engagement here at the O'Keefe Museum. And I want to start off, I would like to begin by recognizing the lands of the Pueblo people on which the sites of the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum stand. We recognize and honor their elders, past and present, and celebrate the vitality of their people today and into future generations. I offer this with humility and gratitude and acknowledgement of the need to confront the ongoing injustices of settler colonialism. I would like to extend a thank you to our members and donors who are here today. Your support made this event possible. And if you are not a member yet and enjoy this program, please consider joining today. Visit gokm.org slash membership to learn more. Throughout this talk, please place your questions in the chat, which can be found at the bottom or top of your screen, depending on your device. We'll try to answer as many as we can at the end of the conversation. Please note that following today's talk, a recording will be made available on the O'Keeffe Museum's website in about a week's time. Captions in both English and Spanish will be available. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter for this morning, Agapita Pita Lopez. Pita began working with American artist Georgia O'Keeffe in late 1974 and became her personal secretary in 1978 until her death on March 6, 1986. A third generation employee, her grandfather and mother also worked for Miss O'Keefe. She continued working with the O'Keefe estate in 1986 and then in 1989 with the Georgia O'Keefe Foundation as its secretary, later serving as the foundation's executive director from 1999 to 2006. From 2006 to 2017, she served as Director of Abiquiu Historic Properties and Rights and Reproduction Manager for the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum and is currently the Project's Director of Historic Properties at Abiquiu and Ghost Ranch. She oversees the maintenance and preservation of both houses, including project planning, research, and reporting. Along with author and scholar Barbara Bueller Lines, she co-wrote the book, Georgia O'Keeffe and Her Houses, Ghost Ranch and Abiquiu, and in 2015, in 2015, sorry. Also along with her brother, Belarmino Lopez, received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the New Mexico Historic Preservation Division. So I'm really excited to be able to introduce Agapita Pita Lopez. Um, Pita is actually here in the building with me, thankfully. And um, I think that they might possibly need a hand. Pita, are you able to, to turn on your camera for us? It's possible Pita might need a hand. Um, give me one second and I will be right back. I'm used to tapping on the words. <laughs> so I'm on. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Pita. I want to uh, thank Chickle for the wonderful introduction and, and wish you all a good morning. I uh, will be talking today about uh, my experiences in growing up. Uh, with Ms. O'Keefe, I began working with her in uh, 1974 and uh, I spent time with her at her Abiquiu home and her ghost ranch home. Uh, but before I go into my full connection with Ms. O'Keefe, I'd like to introduce you to her ghost ranch house, especially for those of you who have never been there. Uh, 
Could we have the first image, Chickley? Yes, we do. I am about to start sharing my screen right now. What the photo you're seeing uh, of our introduction is of Ms. O'Keefe's Ghost Ranch house uh, facing north. You see the Petternell Mountain in the, the background. Now, um, the property Ms. O'Keefe, which became her first home, uh, was originally built uh, next, uh, was originally built in 1933 by Arthur Pack, who owned the ranch. He had built it for his family in this beautiful landscape, uh, surrounded by beautiful cliffs, red hills. Uh, the front yard was the Petternell Mountain. Next. And when Ms. O'Keefe acquired it, it, it took her quite a few years. Uh, this is a beautiful photograph taken for Architectural Digest by Robert Reck. And um, Ms. O'Keefe first came to stay at Ghost Ranch in 1934 and 1935. Uh, she was introduced to the ranch, a dude ranch at the time by friends and she had decided that she loved the place and stayed at the Dude Ranch. They had found a room for her at the time. When she came back in 1936, unfortunately, Miss O'Keefe thinking that she was George O'Keefe and would be able to uh, get a room, came and was, uh, uninvited and um and so uh, they had no room for her at the end as they say and so mr pack who had by then moved back into the dude ranch allowed her to stay uh at the house he had put in he would sometimes rent it out to individuals when they didn't have room at the dude ranch. Uh, she loved it there. She found the space wonderful and then came back in 1937 and 1938. And again, uh, she made herself at home. The photograph that you see in front of you is uh, the, the, the room with the big window had been a closed in porch. Today, it is Ms. O'Keefe's bedroom that she selected, but she would say that it was a closed in porch when she first stayed there. So this was the space that she stayed in. Uh, when she came back in 1940, unfortunately, there was no room for her at all, even at the house. And uh, so she mentioned to Mr. Pack that uh, she wanted him to get rid of everybody that was in the house. And of course, he told her he couldn't do that, that it was still his house. And um, so she states at, at one point that as soon as she saw it, she knew she had to have it. Uh, she also once told me that uh, she couldn't understand people who wanted something badly and didn't just grab for it. And when it came to her house, she grabbed it. And so she asked him to purchase it at that point. And he agreed. He sold her the house along with 7.5 acres in October of 1940. Next. Next image, please. Thank you. Uh, what you see here is an outline of the property boundary. The interior lining is, uh, the main house is in the U shape. And then um, the house itself, the property, the seven and a half acres she bought from Mr. Pack is what you have. The George O'Keefe Museum today owns the, the property and, and the house along with the acreage. But in the early nineties, 
the property boundaries had been uh, pretty offset. And so what was done at the time, uh, instead of zigzagging into Forest Service and zigzagging into Ghost Ranch property, they cleaned out the boundaries. And so today we have slightly over 10 acres in total. Um, Ms. O'Keefe would be very pleased. Next. The interior of the house changed through time. In this image, you get to see the house as it was when Mr. Pack and his family were there. And then uh, when Ms. O'Keefe was working uh, as she rented space into that room. Now, Ms. O'Keefe, even before she moved in, was already thinking of rearranging the house, I guess. And uh, the window that you see near the easel with the painting of the ram's horn uh, was changed. If you see the old photograph, it was a smaller window with small panes and she had it enlarged so she could get that Northern view along with the beautiful view of the cliffs that's in the distance. The lower image is how uh, we have it today. Her lines are a little bit cleaner but you can get a wonderful view of the window that she changed uh, before she uh, moved into the house. Next. This is Miss O'Keefe early on in um, at Ghost Ranch, a photograph taken by Maria Chabot. And uh, it shows her in front of the patio. As you'll see, the cliffs are in the distance behind her. And there were changes. She used to talk about uh, making the, that, that central path. And the house had been called uh, Casa de los Burros, Rancho de los Burros. And um, she talked about having beautiful jimson weeds there. One time uh, she even wrote it in her monograph. She wrote a book in 1976, George O'Keefe by George O'Keefe, where she writes that at one point at the ranch, she had over a hundred blossoms of the jimson weed. And then she found out that they were poisonous and decided to dig them all up. We do not have one jimson weed at Ghost Ranch today. Next. Again, you can see uh, the, the same single path. And in the other picture, you see how she covered that interior path with flagstone throughout the patio and the beautiful Pedernal in the distance. Next. This is Miss O'Keefe at her home. Uh, she uh, loved to collect rocks and bones as probably many of you are aware of. And at her ranch, she had a wonderful rock collection, so many that she would sometimes put them into little boxes where she would label them small rocks, big rocks, white rocks, black rocks, shells, uh, and others she would display on her shelves along with driftwood that she would pick up from the river she was driving up to Abiquiu or other areas. Um, she loved to collect bones. Most of her bone collection was at her ghost ranch house. This is a, a beautiful image of her um, taken um, by Todd Webb. Next. Now I'll talk to you a little bit about my working with Miss O'Keefe. I'm part of the third generation of employees that Ms. O'Keefe had. Um, my grandfather that you see in this beautiful photograph by Malcolm Varon uh, is the gentleman in the photograph. His name is a Stephen Swazo. My grandfather started working as Ms. O'Keefe's gardener sometime in the 1950s and worked up almost up until his death in 1980. My mother, Candelaria Lopez, also worked for Miss O'Keefe. She began uh, in 1971 as her, one of her housekeepers and cooks. She had been um, 
recommended by a, a former housekeeper and cook of Miss O'Keefe's as uh, she was retiring. And my mother, I remember, would say she was so afraid because she had heard Miss O'Keefe was really mean. And um, she said she had been called in for an interview, went over reluctantly not, and unsure. And she said she didn't talk to me. She didn't ask me any questions, took me directly into the kitchen. Uh, there was some hamburger meat on the counter and she told me to make lunch. And my mother would say, I didn't know what she liked. I didn't know what she cooked. I didn't know that she loved vegetables. And she said, I took the ground meat. I made a hamburger patty and prepared vegetables and gave her lunch. And to her amazement, Miss O'Keefe loved it, ate everything on her plate and just told my mother to come home back the next day. I started working in 1974 at a time when Miss O'Keefe was losing her central vision to macular degeneration. She was hiring several local girls to stay with her when she didn't have regular staff working with her. Um, we would work eat night, evenings and nights and weekends. And uh, she asked if I was interested in doing that. And my thought was, you know, it's, it's only at night and weekends. It's not all the time. I was going to school uh, at, the, at that moment. And so I said, yes. And it turned out that she and I got along great. She was not a big talker. She didn't have much to say, but when she spoke, it was really meaningful. And I was extremely shy. So I didn't talk very much either. And of course she found me very easy to work uh, it, with my job because she didn't have to tell me what to do. She would ask me for certain things, whether it was an article of clothing or uh, the preparation of a specific dish for one of her meals. And if I didn't know where the clothing was or I didn't know how to prepare the dish, I would just call my mother and my mother would run me through the whole thing. Therefore, Ms. O'Keefe didn't have to train me at all. I think for a while there, she thought I was probably special, but then realized that Ms. O my mother was behind it all. It was a fantastic experience. Now, my mother didn't like going up to Ghost Ranch. So Ms. O'Keefe always had someone else working at her ranch. Um, next image, please. Uh, this is the layout to Ms. O'Keefe's Ghost Ranch property. Uh, you see her home is in a U shape. Uh, on the left-hand side is her garage, followed by what we call the blue room. It was Arthur Pack's former office. Uh, today, we use it for storage, but Ms. So Keith had painted this beautiful blue into that space. Then uh, there was the library that also worked as a bedroom, uh, Miss O'Keefe's bathroom and closet. Uh, and on the corner is Miss O'Keefe's, uh, that upper corner, Miss O'Keefe's bedroom, as you saw before with those beautiful uh, windows. Uh, next to that, uh, following that was the library for Mr. Pack. And that's where Ms. O'Keefe had her wonderful Macintosh stereo system. And then what had been um, the sitting room for the packs, Ms. O'Keefe converted into a studio. There were slight few changes Ms. O'Keefe made to the house. As you can see that wall between what um, had been uh, Mr. Pack's library and the studio, Ms. O'Keefe uh, shortened quite a bit. Um, on the other side of the house, the front, starting from the bottom, there's two guest bedrooms with a bathroom in between. Uh, the upper bedroom Ms. O'Keefe converted into her uh, dining room, her pantry, her kitchen, and then a small breakfast room that she created uh, formerly had been just a covered porch, she'd say, uh, for firewood. Next. 
Now, several of my family members also worked with Miss O'Keefe. It was just, it wasn't my grandfather, Stephen, my mother, and myself. Uh, all of my brothers and sisters, uh, my sister and my brothers, I should say, uh, worked for Miss O'Keefe, as well as my Aunt Ida. Uh, this is her beautiful photograph taken by Malcolm Varen. Uh, Aunt Ida didn't mind going to Ghost Ranch. So at the time I was there, uh, my Aunt Ida was the housekeeper and cook. And when I stayed at Miss with Miss O'Keefe at the ranch, in the morning I would leave uh, to go to classes during the day and then come back in the afternoon. Usually Aunt Ida was gone by that time. Uh, the other photograph you see is the smaller size pantry in the dining in at Ghost Ranch, very reminiscent of her pantry in Abiquiu, but in a smaller version. One day I had I left, my Aunt Ida came in from Abiquiu, and she would usually bring fresh water uh, along with vegetables and things from the garden that Miss O'Keefe could have with her meals for the day. And um, in the afternoon when I came in, I went to let Miss O'Keefe know in her studio that I was back. And I asked her how her day had gone. And she said that um, it was fine, she said, but Ida was extremely upset. And I thought to myself, oh dear, what did Aunt Ida do? And she said, oh no, she said, she came in extremely upset. She said that she had uh, found that someone had written on the refrigerator door. But for Miss O'Keefe not to mind because she had cleaned it up. It turns out that Andy Warhol had come to visit Miss O'Keefe and autographed the corner, uh, the upper left corner of the refrigerator and Aunt Ida washed it off. Miss O'Keefe was not annoyed that she washed off Andy Warhol's signature, but was more uh, concerned that my Aunt Ida was upset. That's who George O'Keefe was. Next. This is Miss O'Keefe's uh, dining room that she converted from a bedroom. The beautiful table that she would tell everyone uh, that she designed herself. Uh, beautiful space, the walk-in closet for the bedroom. She turned into a broom closet and uh, the space is uh, beautifully built, but Miss O'Keefe was very creative. She would take old crates and turn them into shelves. Uh, she liked to repurpose things and that worked extremely well for her. Next. As I mentioned in Miss O'Keefe's bedroom, this is the beautiful corner view that you see. She could look out to the north to the cliffs or out to the red hills uh, to the west. Beautiful space. Next. Now Miss O'Keefe uh, had ladders to, at both of her houses to go up to the roof. Both homes have flat roofs. At Ghost Ranch, she once told me that she loved going up on the roof, that it, she had a mattress up there, and sometimes at night she would go up and look at the stars. Uh, in your, her library, you would even find a, a wonderful a star finder. Uh, today, if you go to the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum a Welcome Center in Abiquiu, you see a beautiful exhibition of Miss O'Keeffe's camping gear, including the Starfinder. Now, Ghost Ranch was where she was inspired to paint a ladder to the moon. Uh, she uh, talks in her book and, and would also mention to me uh, that one evening she was waiting for a friend uh, to come to her Ghost Ranch house and stood leaning against the ladder uh, she looked at the long dark line of the Pedernal uh, to uh, the south. And she had always kept in mind 
about painting the ladder. She just had known what to do with it. But she sighed, the sky was a pale greenish blue and the high moon was looking so white in the evening sky uh, that um, the next day she created Ladder to the Moon uh, from 19, in 1958. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, painting and it was inspired by her ladder at Ghost Ranch. Next. Here she is on the roof again, looking at the beautiful surrounding of her property. Uh, her house is not a large house. It's uh, maybe slightly over 2,500 square feet, but she uh, thought the landscape surrounding her home was almost like being in heaven. Uh, the cliffs were uh, behind her house to her north, Red Hills to the west, the Pedernal Mountain to the south in her front yard, the beautiful cliffs and the chimneys uh, in the landscape of Ghost Ranch were all around her. Most of her landscape work came from Ghost Ranch. Uh, the inspiration was there the, the 40 plus years that she owned that property. Next. Now, many people are familiar with uh, Miss O'Keefe's painting, Sky Above Clouds 4. She uh, actually created this in her Ghost Ranch garage. Uh, the painting is uh, one of her largest works. It's eight feet by 24 feet. Uh, and uh, she used to talk about how difficult it was to stretch the canvas and how it didn't work quite well. And how a gentleman from Abiquiu who used to help her on occasion with different things, Frank Martinez would come and assist her to do that. Finally, when they had the canvas stretched so that she would be able to paint it well and she had uh, tempered the canvas she was able to paint. And as you can see from this photograph, they put it um, not on the ground, but on, um, on little blocks so that uh, she could start painting. And she would talk about sitting on the floor to paint the lower part of the painting, maybe standing on a chair. And even at times to do the top part, she would put the chair on top of a table and she was up early in the morning and worked until the evening. And because it was in the garage that faced west, she had said she would open the door, the doors would be open quite wide and she would go out into the distance to look at the painting from afar. Uh, next. And of course, this is the beautiful creation. Today it's at the Art Institute of Chicago, but she said it was, she had more trouble trying to get this painting shipped from Ghost Ranch than it, it took her to paint it. They had brought in a big truck, but it didn't fit in the truck. It was too large. So what they wound up doing was actually take the canvas off of the stretcher bar, uh, rolled it up, and uh, were able to ship it out that way. She could... Uh, in frustration talk on and on about all the things they had to do to get that painting shipped out. Next. Now these are the beautiful cliffs of Miss O'Keefe's backyard. Uh, Miss O'Keefe and I, when I was with her, would take walks out toward the cliff all the time. She loved to walk. We might take an early morning walk before breakfast and another one in the afternoon after dinner, if there was time, uh, she did retire early, but she loved walking out to the cliff. Uh, she would go on, uh, her two chow chows that she had would be out chasing rabbits and she and I would be walking toward the cliff. Now halfway between her house and the cliff, uh, there was this old cedar tree where she had this folded uh, stool. 
Now, if she was a little bit tired, she might pull out the stool from the back of the tree, sit for a while, put it back, and then we continue till we got to the bottom of the cliff. Now, you have to remember that when I began working with Miss O'Keefe in 1974, she was already 87 years old, but still very spry and loved to walk. At Gostrand, she had the liberty of walking towards the cliffs or the hills, uh, walking up and down the road near her house, sometimes without seeing a single soul. She loved that about the space. She enjoyed uh, her time alone, but uh, she also enjoyed the beauty of the space that surrounded her. Next. Here's another view of the cliffs and that's as far as we would get. Now, while walking toward the cliff, Miss O'Keefe always carried a cane. Not that she needed it though. She would on occasion tap it on the ground and she would say, oh, I'm just letting the rattlesnakes know we're coming along. And then she'd follow by telling me that the snakes were probably more afraid of us than we were of them. That I told her I didn't quite believe, but uh, if the tapping helped, I was doing fine. In fact, uh, most recently I got an article from uh, one of uh, my colleagues uh, noting that uh, New Mexico might have a few more rattlesnakes this year than on other occasions. My mother, that was one of her reasons for not wanting to go to the ranch. Uh, she always talked about the rattlesnakes and it was well known that uh, Ms. O'Keefe's house was built on a rattlesnake pit. And uh, after Ms. O'Keefe passed on, I remember inviting my mother to come to the ranch with me. I had been sent on an errand and I knew she hadn't been to Ghost Ranch in many, many years. And she said, oh no, there's snakes up there. I said, mom, all the years that I worked with Miss O'Keefe, I never saw a rattlesnake. So you guessed it, she did go with me. And when I opened the door to put the key in the, the keyhole, out slithered a little rattlesnake when I opened the screen door. My mother got back in the car and she said, see, I told you so. Next. Now the beautiful Pedernal Mountain um, is uh, a mountain that Miss O'Keefe always talked about and she loved. And she is known to have said in many interviews in her book and to anyone that would listen, that God had told her that if she painted it enough, it was hers. She did create, I would say over 15 to 20 works of the Pedernal Mountain, whether it was with the red hills in front of it, whether it was just the Pedernal Mountain in the back. And um, it, it was a beautiful mountain. Um, the, Cerro Perdenal is, uh, Perdenal is the Spanish word for flint. And um, there are many stories uh, about the mountain, but it, um, Kurt Kempter, our, one of our um, geologists in the Abiquiu area and author, um, gives a great version in, on his website about the Perdenal if anyone's interested in, in joining there. Next. Now this is um, Miss O'Keefe's painting that she called My Front Yard. Again, it's a view of the Pedernal. You see those beautiful red hills again to the far right in the lower corner. There's a gully uh, that breaks the landscape uh, right behind the, the red hills. And these are beautiful tamarisks and cottonwoods that grow there. And then in the far distance is the beautiful valley. Uh, on the top part of the mountain, you see this little brownish uh, area to the uh, right of the mesa on top. 
Miss O'Keefe always said that that was a deer, that it was in the shape of a deer. I never quite saw it in the original mountain, but she did paint it for me in that painting. I, at least I got to see it in that work. Not that she did the painting for me because this work was created in 1941, but I got to see what she saw. Next. Now, uh, Miss O'Keefe, again, loved to sit in the patio. That's one thing we did quite often when I worked uh, for her up at the ranch. She would sit in the patio, look out into the pedernal. Sometimes I would read to her because of her eyesight. We did a lot of reading. Uh, she would also sit there in the quiet sometimes. All we would hear were the noises of the birds, uh, the wind blowing, or cars going along US 84, which is in the distance from her property. Uh, she would sometimes also sit out and listen to music. She had a wonderful music collection. Uh, she and I mostly listened to classical music, Brahms, Mendelssohn, Bach, but her album collection was vast variety of composers. She had salsa music and jazz and operettas, but it was the classical music that we mostly listened to. Um, now, Miss O'Keefe passed away in uh, March of 1986. And uh, for her instructions, she asked that her ashes be thrown from the Pedernal Mountain. And that was done. Uh, this photograph reminds me so much of how she talked about God giving her the mountain. And eventually she did get it. Uh, the home, as I said, uh, now belongs um, to the George O'Keefe Museum. We work on the house. Uh, as Chikla mentioned, I'm the projects director for the historic properties. So we maintain both her Abiquiu and Ghost Ranch home. We do the various repairs that are needed. Um, we do its preservation. We are currently working on making her home at Ghost Ranch uh, an, uh, in the National Historic a National Historic Landmark to be on the National Register. Her home in Abiquiu is already on the register. That was done in 1998. And now we're working on doing that for her Ghost Ranch property. Uh, as with the Abiquiu House, we will also uh, be working on a cultural landscape study, a preservation study, and creating a historic structures report because the museum is hoping that in the future, it will be able to open the home uh, to the general public. Uh, right now, it's not open to the public because there are several things we have to do and several logistics we have to take care of, but always keep uh, looking into the museum's website uh, where you will eventually see that uh, the Ghost Ranch home will be open to the public. Um, I want to uh, thank you all uh, for joining us. I want to uh, be able to uh, thank uh, Chicla and the museum for asking me to do this. Uh, I am very pleased to uh, respond to questions now if uh, uh, there are any that you might have wanted uh, information on. You know, that was amazing. Thank you so much. I love, I love being able to hear your stories. Um, you were one of the first people that I met when I first started. Oh, you can't, you can't hear me, Peter? Well, I, I will, can't hear you, <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there in one minute. The the audio might be low on your end, but Peter was one of the first people that I was able to to meet, and um, I love being able to go on that tour. 
um, through Ghost Ranch, uh, such just so much knowledge and like history there. So I'm going to start getting some of these questions together. I'm going to go check on PETA's audio really quick. Um, it will be one minute and then we'll start jumping into some questions also. Can you hear me, Pita? I can hear you. Thank you. Awesome. Pita, I was just saying um, how, how you were one of the first people that I met when I first started here at the museum and I was able to do the Ghost Ranch tour with you. And I loved hearing your stories, um, so much knowledge and you're so awesome. I love being able to hear those stories. And I remember you telling me about the tea that you used to make for, for Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, I found that so interesting. She seems like a coffee person to me, but you said that she was mostly a tea person. She did have coffee with breakfast most of the time. And I remember the first time I made coffee for her for breakfast. I'm not a coffee drinker myself. And uh, she, used the, she liked to use the carafe. And I made coffee and she ate her breakfast, but she, when she walked into the kitchen, uh, she gave me the, the cup and it was still full. And she said, you know, I think if I had put my spoon in it, it would have stood up straight. <laughs> I did learn to make coffee that she liked though, but most of the time she was a tea drinker. That's awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and choose a couple of questions that we might be able to do. We only have about 15 minutes left, folks. So unfortunately, I definitely won't we won't be able to get to to every question, but I'll try to pick out a couple that maybe we can do now. Um, and then what I can do, Pita, is I can read it out for you. And if you need me to repeat it or anything like that, I, I would be happy to um, to do that. Um, but one of the questions that came in is, can you tell us more about Miss O'Keefe's habits and daily schedule? When would she listen to music? Did she enjoy reading? Was she a worrier? Um, Miss O'Keefe did not have a schedule per se. I would think that her meals were probably the most scheduled times. Breakfast was early after her morning walk, probably starting about 7. Uh, 7.30, lunch was at noon, and that was her main meal. Supper was light, and that was earth, also early in the afternoon. But her day progressed as it inspired her when she got up in the morning. Uh, there were times that um, we would work on correspondence. Of course, when I was there in the 70s and early 80s, she was still creating art. And so if that inspired her to work in the early afternoon or early in the morning or uh, at any time, uh, that's what she would do, whether it was uh, with works on paper or later her clay work. Uh, she did about 30 pieces in all before she died. And, uh, you know, visitations uh, by friends and family, uh, you know, working in the office. Uh, I also worked with her. Uh, as Chikla mentioned, I became her uh, secretary in 1978. And so, but even before that as a companion, uh, I would work on correspondence with her. Uh, you would read um, the, the letter from a fan most in most cases. And she would tell you what she wanted to reply. And I type it up and she would sign the letter. So in a sense, uh, it was whatever inspired her. She did not have a set schedule. Awesome, yeah, I think you, you might have answered uh, one of the other questions or maybe even a couple of the other questions that were already in there. So I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit. Um, we have one here that says, what well-known artists or people visited there while you were there? I know that you mentioned 
Andy Warhol, of course, but were there any others that you, you can think of? Well, most definitely uh, Todd Webb, Ansel Adams, uh, some of her contemporaries uh, I, I met there. Uh, there were a few celebrities, of course, uh, that uh, were interested in purchasing her art. Uh, you know, uh, she didn't entertain very much by the time I knew her and uh, didn't see too many people. But on occasion, uh, we did get some visitors. Uh, we got Joni Mitchell. Um, and uh, there were quite a few people that I did get to meet. I was very fortunate uh, just as I got to travel with her in some of those later years uh, back east and uh, to San Francisco and such. Thanks, Peter. There's also somebody asking about um, the architect of the Ghost Ranch property and what year it was built. I know that there's a long history to that and you know, it's been exchanged a couple of times, but maybe you want to touch on that a little bit? Uh, definitely. Uh, a little bit of history of Ghost Ranch can be found in a book written by Leslie Pauling Kempis uh, titled Ghost Ranch. And there, uh, the house was built in 1933 by uh, Mr. Pack and uh, others that he had on staff at Ghost Ranch who had also built some of the facilities at the ranch. Off the top of my head, I don't know the exact architect or the gentleman that supervised the entire uh, construction of the house. But if you get that book, it's all in there. And it's a wonderful, fascinating reading. Yeah, and just to remind folks, we will be sharing after the uh, lecture is over, you will be receiving an email with the recorded version of this. You'll be able to find it on our website. And any other sort of additional information that comes up, like the name of that book or anything like that, I'll be sure to include that in there too. Uh, one of these other questions says, how did Miss O'Keefe vary her daily routine if she was at Ghost Ranch versus Abiquiu in terms of activities, walking, painting, etc.? I know that I remember you telling me a lot about uh, the role even of the dogs at different properties, you know, they, they seem to have different roles depending on where she was at. Uh, quite definitely, Abiquiu was her winter home. And of course it was the cold season. So uh, Miss O'Keefe in, in Abiquiu, uh, for example, like Jikla mentioned, her chow chows were kept uh, within the compound of the home, which includes the garden, uh, the main compound of the residence. What she did was she enclosed that space so her dogs wouldn't roam out into the village. Uh, when I first started working with her, she probably would mention how her dogs would go out into the plaza and they were the kings of all the dogs of Abiquiu. But then as more traffic started coming to Abiquiu, um, one of the dogs uh, was injured slightly with, by a vehicle. And so she enclosed the compound so they would walk uh, around in the plaza. Now her walking area in Abiquiu was also uh, somewhat limited. Uh, she didn't go up and down the road as much as she did uh, going around the area of her driveway. It's a good sized driveway and uh, she would walk several uh, circles around that driveway going in one direction, marking it with a stone, going in a separate direction, marking that with a stone. By the time she had probably eight to 12 rounds, she was ready to go in the house. But at times in the later years, uh, people would come by, they knew where her house was located and she might be taking a walk and they'd stop by her gate and they'd yell for her to say hello and to let her know that they had come from every part of the world just to meet her. Uh, and so that sort of interrupted her walk. Where at Ghost Ranch, uh, the area was uh, somewhat away from the main compound and she was able to uh, walk anywhere she wanted to walk and hardly ever see anyone. Now, Arthur Pack gave 
uh, Ghost Ranch to the Presbyterian Church um, in the, uh, around 1955. And um, Ms. O'Keefe, of course, at the time was not very happy with Mr. Pack about that. Uh, in her mind, she thought, well, if you're going to give this property away, which was 22,000 plus acres, why not give it to me? <laughs> why you give it to the Presbyterian Church? But Mr. Pack was a conservationist and uh, he had worked uh, with the Presbyterian Church to be able to preserve the space. And, not saying Ms. O'Keefe wouldn't have done that as well, but he knew that she would be really upset if uh, she knew he was uh, talking to somebody about uh, moving away from the ranch. And um, I think that always somehow uh, got to her, but uh, she worked really well with the different directors at the ranch. They assisted her in many ways, but on occasion, sometimes the maintenance staff would drive by the house and she'd say, there goes the Presbyterian. And I'd say, no, Miss O'Keefe, that's so-and-so because I knew them, they were from the Happy Q area and, and not a Presbyterian. But in her mind, anyone that was on the ranch was a Presbyterian. But the privacy she really enjoyed was at the ranch in the summer. Yeah, I mean, I think I remember what stood out to me the most from when I first met you and the stories that you would tell me was she had quite the sense of humor. She really like, she, she was funny. She did. She, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people know her through her photographs and when she sat for uh, different uh, photographers uh, for articles or, or magazines or things like that, she seemed very austere and very stern and, and not never quite smiling, but she enjoyed a good joke and she enjoyed laughing and uh, she did enjoy, um, uh, you know, friends and family and uh, Malcolm Barron has an exhibit now at the George O'Keefe Museum in Santa Fe where he shows her smiling uh, at her ghost ranch house. Kind of related to to that, um, someone also asked if you ever met any of her siblings and if she ever had like immediate family, brothers or sisters or anything like that that would come and visit. Most definitely, her sister uh, Catherine uh, Clenard from Wisconsin would come. Uh, Catherine uh, was uh, one of her uh, younger sisters. Of course, Miss O'Keefe was the oldest of the girls. Uh, the other sister that would come was also uh, Claudia O'Keefe. Now Claudia came from Los Angeles and while Miss O'Keefe was staying at the ranch, Claudia would stay at her ghost abacute house. And, um, uh, and, and she was always in communication with her sister Anita as well. Uh, so though Anita didn't uh, come to abacute while I was there, uh, Catherine and of course her family and her daughter and her nieces and uh, nephews uh, would also come and stay there. Uh, June O'Keefe Sebring was Miss O'Keefe's niece from one of her brothers would also come and visit Miss O'Keefe. At the time she also lived in California. Thanks, Peter. I think we have time for maybe a couple of more questions, some quick ones. Um, the final portrait that you showed in the um, in the slideshow where she's sitting in the chair with the pedernal in the background, do you know who the photographer for that was? Yes, uh, that was photographed by Arnold Newman. Great. And um, say that again. Uh, Arnold Newman from 1968. Arnold Newman, 1968, great. And um, I guess I would also love to know, someone said that they are planning to visit the, museums, it, the museum in September, and then they're going to do a Wednesday tour of the home in Abiquiu. Um, they are wondering if you have any recommendations on how to maximize their visit to the properties. Uh, well, most definitely, uh either 
coming to the museum before and after will give you a wonderful uh, background uh, regarding the artwork and materials you'll see at the museum. Uh, learning from the wonderful guides we have in Abiquiu uh, about Miss O'Keefe at her home there or uh, things related to her artwork. Uh, you get to see the, the black door that she painted very often in Abiquiu and her reason for wanting to buy the Abiquiu house. Uh, the Welcome Center, the O'Keefe Welcome Center that uh, you will, is your starting point for the tour of the Abiquiu House, uh, has wonderful exhibits put up by our uh, curator in Abiquiu, Justina Renzoni. And then of course, if you wanna see more O'Keefe things, Ghost Ranch has several uh, programs where you can either take a driving tour to different sites from Miss O'Keefe painted, or you can go horseback riding. Now, the Georgia O'Keefe Museum and the Ghost Ranch Education and Retreat Center are two different entities. So for the uh, driving tour to different sites that she painted and the horseback riding, you do have to contact the Georgia O'Keefe, uh, I'm sorry, the Ghost Ranch uh, education and retreat center. Awesome, Peter. Thank you so much. We are coming up on a couple of minutes left. Um, folks, if I didn't get to your question, I'm so sorry. Um, I wish we had more time with Peter because, yeah, I mean, these stories could go on for a long time, and I know that. Um, but Peter, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you any anything else that you might want to share before um, before we begin to close down? I just want to tell everyone that I am so pleased to be here and be able to do this uh, and share my memories of Miss O'Keefe with you. I really love to bring her to life if I can. Uh, for those that uh, aren't very familiar with her or just read the uh, biographies uh, that came later in her life. But I am extremely pleased and thank you so much for joining us. Folks, thank you so much. Um, it was great to spend this morning with you all. Like I said, this recording will be available um, via the museum's website. So make sure that should be up within a week's time. Um, and we also send out an email to everyone that registered for this um, that will have a direct link to that. Um, so you should be able to see that. And um, thank you all so much for coming. I am going to start closing out. Thank you all so much. And I hope you have a great day. Have a great day. Bye.